Hey there team, welcome back to the channel and welcome to my overview of Crown Wars The Black Prince. So for those who want to cross it, on this channel I do overviews and reviews pretty much daily. And when I do one of these overviews, it's just a look at the first two hours of the game. That's the Steam refund window. Steam reckons you can make up your mind about whether you want to keep a game or not in that time period and I generally tend to agree. Broadly speaking, 20 hours in, you're not really gonna change your mind from what you were thinking two hours in. This also allows me to soft triage what I will and won't review going forward. So it's a short punchy video, we'll keep it around 10 minutes. I'll give you the broad strokes, so you can figure it out for yourself. So straight out of the bat, I really, really like this. And I wasn't sure what I was gonna think going in. The elevator pitch is that this is basically medieval XCOM and it's done incredibly well by honestly wearing its inspiration on the sleeve, it brings a lot of the mechanics copy paste, which, you know, we can talk about. I'm not 100% sure how they're gonna go from like cover based shooter into something that's essentially a melee attrition. But that was my one big takeaway, is that this is the XCOM game that I never expected to get. And then two, this is the Mordheim game that I never expected to get. People, you know, companies have had a swing at the Mordheim sort of franchise, and I grew up with that tabletop. It's probably my favorite thing out of Games Workshop ever. Forget 40k, all that sort of stuff. I have some really fond memories of tabletop Mordheim. And this sort of is exactly what I would want it to be. So if that sort of stuff tickles you, go get this. My my hackles were up, my apprehension was because, well, not so much about, about Nacon. Nacon is a bit hit and miss, but these days they're a bit more hit than miss. You know, things like Robocop, and I actually quite like Gangs of Sherwood, as long as you engage with it as you're supposed to. You know, multiplayer with the boys, beer and pizza. And on top of that, it's by Artifact Studio. And the last game that I really had anything to do with was Dungeons of in her book or some weird bloody French name. And while that was kind of a prototype of this, turn-based medieval type combat, the humor was just insufferable. But I got pushed back on that as well, so that might just be me being curmudgeon -y. But regardless, they test bedded all of that stuff and I still remember the gameplay loop being pretty solid and it, they've, they've really nailed it here. And instead they've gone for playing it a bit straight, but they're still going with their French roots, their French background, um, this is sort of on the tail end of the Hundred Years War. Look, I'm not really a scholar of that whole time period. You know, I'm, I'm a bogan from a convict island. But essentially, this picks up on the back end of the, the Battle of Portois, where the Black Prince took the King of France uh, hostage, and France basically immediately went into civil strife and anarchy. And this is in that shadow. But that's kind of cool. I don't, I don't really know of anything, at least in sort of Western mainstream, that really covers off of, on this, so that's cool. So you have an intro which may have some sort of significance later in the story, some sort of brotherhood trying to hold out, and it's one of those, you know, here's all the different units with all the abilities. We're going to front load what's to come in the game. And so you get through that, and it teaches you the mechanics. And off you go, you, you play as sort of a minor house, starting to develop the, honestly, it's a fairly thin story so far, but the, the really compelling part is the mechanics. So you have like a, a home sort of chateau, or I suppose, little castle with areas that you're unlocking pretty quickly. Like in my two hours, I've unlocked just about every area already, like, uh, you know, like lab for research and blacksmiths and barracks and all that sort of stuff. But a lot of this stuff, while doing its own skin and its own aesthetic, will be immediately recognizable to anyone that's into, again, specifically in the turn-based tactics space, the XCOM type games. You've got your parts of ship or parts of base, whatever you'd like to call them, and uh, and it's all very familiar. Mechanically, uh, as, as I alluded to, there's a hurdle you've got to get over. Like, the, the reason I would say, I think anyone that's speculated about it, why you don't really see something that plays really close and feels like XCOM, but in medieval, is the same reason that melee is just so terrifyingly, effectively uh, horrible against you in the XCOM games. Some of the scariest creatures are, you know, the, the aliens stand in, what are they called, bloody chrysalids or something like that. And you do everything within your power not to let them touch your dudes because it's a bit of a death sentence. And so trying to make a game as that as the cornerstone is uh, kind of scary. So a couple of ways they've gotten around it. Uh, one would be that it actually still does have more of a 50-50 split between melee and skirmish 
shooting. In fact, the whole concept of this is very war bandy, very small skirmish. So potentially having half the dudes on the table be archers is is viable and, and arguably the way to go in some cases, and the enemy does the same thing. Um, but also on that, the game kind of cheats in your favor. It puts a finger on the scale, and I'm not complaining, in that the enemy essentially gets one move, one attack, and you, your characters, get one move, two attacks. So they've changed the the whole structure with that little tweak. And again, in XCOM, generally speaking, it's two action points and you can choose to use them however you want, but it would never exceed really more than one attack. So it's gonna be either like one move, one attack, or just two move sprint. So in this, it's basically three, and you can substitute your attacks for sprints as well. So that creates a huge difference that you can use three action points worth of mobility, or you can double swing on dudes in combat. On the other side of that as well, you have armor and just generally speaking, the damage cap or whatever you would like to call it is fairly low. So you dudes do get sort of mired and dug into each other and beat the living crap out of each other. And armor is hard mitigation per pip of armor is a 10% of damage mitigation. I'm not 100% sure what the math behind that is. Being that, does that mean 10 pips means a dude's invulnerable? I don't know. But stripping armor with hammers and things like that is, is definitely part of the play. You have different weapon sets that you can swap out before battle. And there are some interesting ones, you know, like this sort of smaller maces and hammers, and they'll be like the first hit on that turn will strip a, a point of armor. Whereas you've got actual dedicated big bloody fuck you hammers and they'll, you know, they'll strip armor every turn. But because of all of this, all your characters are fairly beefy, same as the, the enemy. And a lot of the interplay is about trying to strip armor, apply debuffs, you know, blind, hobble, bleed, poison. It does go into the realm of sort of alchemists and that sort of stuff. So you can throw fire bombs and crap like that and healing bombs. I mean, it's still just a video game. And then positioning as well. And already there's some really clever combo setups. You know, you can get sort of pet characters like hunter type dudes who themselves can hybrid. You can make them melee, you can make them ranged, but they will synergize with their dog or bear. And the bears are sick. They stand up on their back feet. Oh my God, they're terrifying. But uh, but it will be a combo one, two. You know, if your bear has hit them or if your hunter has hit them or vice versa, that will synergize with each other. Likewise, there's attack of opportunities from melee characters. And that's more of how you control space, which, you know, you would have seen when you get more into the sort of Baldur's Gate RPGs, that sort of stuff as well. Uh, you can generate taunt from stances with certain champion characters, but it's not super reliable as well. So controlling the space isn't necessarily what you might think as, you know, just having a tank take everything. And the attrition and wearing down as you go through the level and, you know, attack more pods of enemies, it takes that same pod concept that you would be familiar with from XCOM and Essentially, that you, you encounter a, a little pocket of dudes, and once you're done with them, you move through the level, and there'll be another pocket of dudes as well. But you generally got to go through like three or four, and by the time you're up to that fourth one, whoo, your dudes are all pretty much on death's door. It works out very well. If they do go down, they still go back to base, and they can sort of be healed up as well, and I think maybe there's a limitation to how many times they can go down in their lifetime before they get permadeath, which is kind of actually cool. I'm not 100% sure how well some of the copy paste will come across. Some of the battles were relatively easy, straightforward, no ceiling skirmishes. You can just sort of take your time. Other ones had timers, which I, you know, I will say to the end of time, they're essential to making these sort of games work. If you let a player just sit on their laurels for 100 turns, they will just sit in the corner and turtle. And then I'll give it a negative review because they were bored. But also things like infinite reinforces, reinforcements while you're trying to extract, that seemed a bit sketch. And I just thunder run for the exit in the end because uh, my dudes were getting drilled too hard. Uh, so that, mm, I'm not 100% sure if, if uh, some of the mechanics are gonna miss, but the point is most of it hits a lot better and a lot more considered than I would have actually expected going in. Again, I knew I was gonna get this game and check it out. So I did go in fairly blind. I, I didn't really know what I was in for and what an absolute pleasant surprise. This is sort of a must play if you are an XCOM fan or just generally you like solid turn-based tactics regardless of the setting or anything like that because this is actually pretty primo the way that it's laid out. I, re I reckon it's really good. It's going on the list. Maybe I'll review it. Let me know what you reckon team. Might just leave it there for the time being. I'll catch you guys on the next one.